Today I have the pleasure of speaking with Tony Sklar from Ideonomics. How are you today? I am fantastic, Tracy, and thank you so much for uh, for having us on. And of course, you're speaking to us from New York City. Is that correct? I sure am, right here in uh, the the zombie apocalypse epicenter, if you will. <laughs> yep. So speaking of location, if you ask us here at Investor Intel, we believe you are at the right place at the right time. You're basically end-to-end -end EV solutions. Is that not correct? Both uh, kind of capital and mobility. Well, I, I appreciate that very, very much. I mean, we think that we are very lucky to be participating in an ecosystem right now that is having a significant uh, um, uh, amount of noise in the market, for sure. And then hopefully a lot of that noise will transition through to business models that really bring large value back to shareholders. I think that's really important. Well, obviously, you have a lot of shareholders. You have some of the most uh, dynamic, uh, uh, what do you call, volume happening of any company on the NASDAQ, especially for one that really, you know, arguably deserves a lot more attention. So why don't we start there with, Tony, uh, why are you getting such incredible volume for Ideonomics? Is it just because you're, again, you are at the right place at the right time? Well, I, I appreciate that, Tracy, very much. I think that there's a lot of components right now in the retail markets that are driving things that today sound like GameStop and AMC. And tomorrow, fast money shifts from retail into something different. And I think that because of our price, that there is a relative perception that it is not as expensive as maybe some of our other competitors in the in the market space. And I think that, you know, we've got um, sort of a different capital structure as well. You know, we have had gone through a business transformation and not done what a lot of other companies may have done, which is, you know, um, tighten up their capital market structure. We didn't believe that we needed to do that because investors need to and should have the opportunity to participate in the growth of a new company and not not be on the other end of what right now is a, is a SPAC craze or could have been an IPO craze where valuations may be reflective of what the analyst community or or brokerage community are are are, are speaking to. Whereas Ideonomics, our valuation is in the is in the capital of the of the company, and it's what it trades at today. And so I think that that's really important to understand as we approach a $1.5 billion market cap. And as you look at some of our other competitors who may have similar or greater market caps, but our, our security is driven by what the market has seen us do within the last year against our competitors who maybe be new to the market and haven't had the opportunity to really show their wares as well as we have. I think, boom, you just said it your capital market model. How about you just press down on that and explain that out there to maybe some investors, the few that are not, that do not have IDEX on their radar. Well, I appreciate that. So as I'm sure that maybe some of your viewers or, uh, or folks have had a chance to listen to either myself or our, uh, or our CEO of Poor on many different uh, conferences that are being streamed virtually online uh, today, I think we're really lucky to have investors have the ability to participate in some of these conferences, like the Needham conference that Alf recently spoke at. And, and so I think it's really important for that message to be able to continue to resonate to our to our um, to our audience, our investors, first of all, but more importantly, all all the other market participants that make up this ecosystem right now. We have a great business model, a sales to financing to charging model. We are in the commercial EV enablement space. We want to make sure that we can provide our customers with the best procured vehicle and garner them the opportunity to find that finance that at a rate that makes them comfortable, that works for their capital model. And more importantly, where we really feel the rubber meets the road in this particular business model, provide them the energy solutions or the charging solutions that are really going to be that at more annuitized income back for our shareholders, but more importantly, the ease of use for our customers. If you're a last mile vehicle uh, provider, you're a, you're a, a vegetable um, uh, guy and you need you know 3,000 different vegetable trucks to procure your stuff all over a particular area, you, you can't go buy a Tesla or a one of Neo or a Lucid. You need a solution. You need someone who's going to get you that best vehicle for your product. 
And you're going to need to finance that you're, unless you're going to cut a check for it, which doesn't happen a lot here in, uh, in America, let alone the rest of the globe. And you're going to need a charging solution. And we can provide that for you, whereas most of our competitors are in single lanes. Okay, so you've had, I mean, a fantastic news flow, obviously, and I recommend everyone go to your website to get caught up to speed, of course, and do their own due diligence. But I found your January 5th news about your definitive agreement to acquire 100% of privately held wave, a provider of wireless charging systems for commercial EVs, particularly interesting and intriguing to me personally. Can you tell us a little bit more about this deal and, and what you see happening in 2021 with that particular deal? Sure. Great question. And thanks so much for that. So Wave is an incredible company and the people at Wave are even more incredible. They have worked for a very long time to bring a solution to the market that is going to make a revolutional change to the charging and the way that we, uh, the way we look at that. If you just think out of the gate about autonomous driving, autonomous driving, everybody talks about it. We see a lot of uh, proof of concepts going on in various different markets. But I think that if you are um, paying attention to this particular ecosystem, you know that you know that this autonomous charging is coming pretty quickly. And so to be able to facilitate the charging mechanisms of that wireless charging makes the most sense, unless you're going to have some sort of automatic arm that's going to come out and try to, you know, be sort of robotic. And how do you do that for 5,000 buses in a municipal depot? wireless charging. It makes so much more sense. And being able to offer that product in this market today in the onset of the commercial vehicle enablement made a lot of sense to us and will bring a lot of value to our shareholders for years to come. We've got great competitors in the charging space in uh, in, in the uh, ecosystem, and we're really happy to have that co-opetition. We need to have a lot of players and a lot of different solutions. And there are folks who are going to have passenger cars in their family that are going to need a plug-in solution. And there are some commercial vehicles as well that will need a plug-in solution, but most are going to need a wireless solution. And that's really where I think that Wade is going to make a large difference. And as we get into 2021 late and 2022 and 23 and beyond, when we talk about the legislations that are changing, the stimulus that is changing, and the packages of new and green clean tech that are coming into our marketplace, when those vehicles start to con mass get positioned globally, they're all going to need charging. And that switch in energy demand from, demand from fossil fuel through to energy is where we're providing value back to our shareholders. Wireless charging makes a lot of sense for a lot of different commercial operators in the ecosystem. So, Tony, one of the challenges um, I see in looking at ideonomics and based on the commentary we're getting on our site is you guys are doing so much so quickly I think investors are having a hard time keeping up with you. Um, is there a way that you have, uh, I don't know, a whole new stewardship program for people to call your 24-hour time <laughs> hotline with, hi, I'm an Ideonomics, I'm an IDEX uh, shareholder, I'm not really following the last news release because, I mean, you are putting them out quickly and they are real milestones. Can you tell me how you're handling that? Are you planning on spinning out, for instance, additional companies? So for right now, we're growing the particular divisions that we have. We have um, some great fintech assets, and we're capitalizing on that and continuing to grow that. Our recent purchase of the Timios is a great example of a cash flow positive company that is rich in data that has not been mined yet. And our fintech assets bode well in that situation. And so we feel that being able to grow and mine that data will continue to bring value back to the shareholders where we've had um, these fintech assets for quite a while. So the EV is very exciting. Obviously, our sales to financing to charging model and our recent acquisition of Wave will continue to help fuel that entire line and business. For right now, you know, I think that we're very happy hiring. There's lots of great talent out there. And as Alf said the other day, if you are not applying to Ideonomics, you're not doing the right thing. We're bringing on some very um, seasoned folks for EV and for fintech and in marketing as well for product so that we can help show our investor community and our, our entire um, community the reasons why these industries will cross over very, very well as we continue to go forward. As for a spin out, 
you'll uh, you'll have to continue to pay attention to us for sure. I think that 2021 is going to be a very exciting year for us, as is 2022. And while those are all compelling reasons to be following Ideonomics, let me ask you the question that our audience will be asking me, which is, you got to tell me, Tony, is it too late to get in? I think Alf says it as well, uh, very effectively. We are in a high growth uh, industry. All of the EV industry is brand new. You can liken it to the cell phone industry. When the first iPhone came out, there were a lot of competitors that were running to catch up. And some companies ended up making it and others didn't. One of the great things that we provide value back to our shareholders in is that we are not a one-trick pony. And that is very salient. However, the ecosystem is very, very new, and we have a stock price that is still relatively low compared to our peer group. So you can t you can purchase a couple shares in the speculative part of your portfolio. You can put it away for 18 plus months, and we think that you're going to be very happy by the time you look at that in, 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 uh, in that horizon. So I think that that's really important for all of the investors to know. You've got to talk to your investment advisor and make sure that it is the right investment for you, that the EV ecosystem is still um, enjoying an expressive amount of growth and will continue to for many, many years to come. Lots of new technologies coming to the market, lots of new vehicles coming into the market, and that growth which we will participate in with our sales to financing to charging model is one of the reasons that makes us a really great investment. Tony, as always, it's a pleasure. Thank you so much for the update. And I got to tell you, many of the shareholders that were introduced to Ideonomics through Investor Intel in the last quarter have been very, very pleased and uh, are enthusiastic uh, shareholders. Thank you. I appreciate that. This year is going to be very exciting with Earth Day on the way. I think that that is an excellent inflection point for our ecosystem as a whole. You're going to see a lot of noise come to market, and it's very important that investors pay attention to what companies are doing the right moves in ESG and, uh, and clean tech and green tech.